Ever since I was eight years old, I knew I wanted to work in film. But what I didn't know was that not one soul around me would be able to teach me what I needed to get there. I was alone. Because where I live, it's an area where no one leaves. Entire families just stay put because through life they are conditioned to not want anything more than what's offered. But not me. I was getting out. My love for movies was always there, but I didn't really feel the bug until the summer of 2001 when my dad suggested that we make a movie because he was bored. I never knew that my father being bored, that that day would change my life forever. We filmed for two days and created a horrible black and white slasher film that we watched and absolutely loved. It was horrible, but it was ours. My brother and I, the following Christmas, we asked for one thing, one thing only, and that was a camera of our own. And we got it. And from that moment, we started creating everything, anything, to pave our path, to create the successful things that we started creating today. My name is Cody King. I'm the owner of Toxic Film Productions, and this is the story of how I basically took DIY to the next level and turned my ideas into studio productions. I am not the best filmmaker, but I do really enjoy the art that I put out. And I've also had some fans, some people that really do enjoy the work that I put out as well. The only problem is, is every single production costs money and that's something that it becomes very scarce in the area that I live in. So I had to make do with what I had. I started taking a more DIY route to build up my production company, Toxic Film Productions. And with my new innovative ideas and things that I basically ended up having to do on the cheap I ended up developing a style of my own Yeah, so my job uh, in toxic film industry today is I do a lot of I do I mess a lot around with a lot of the post um, post editing sound effects uh, sound engineering uh, score stuff um, I'm more hands on with like anything that requires music or some kind of sound design I think gr growing up it was initially more about the fun but like the more that we started playing around with like the process of filming and coming up with stories and like different kind of practical effects that we could use and then you know apply to like what we were filming it, it started to feel like more like something that we can turn into like something bigger than just projects like we could build off of it create a brand it started to feel more like that I think I think oh, I mean I don't know. When I first started the music thing, a lot of it was just me playing around and I wanted to kind of like learn it first and 
I took the same approach after I started getting to a place where I was comfortable. I started thinking of like real world places that I could apply it and turn it into more than just a hobby. Um, so a lot of that, I mean, a lot of that learning and kind of growing from that process is something that I did take away from the filming we did when we were back in school. <laughs> I've known Cody like my, his whole life, most of my life, um, long enough to see him grow as an artist and kind of master his craft. You know, the arsenal of tools at his disposal has grown like, like piece by piece. And with each one, it's like you're getting kind of a more perfected idea of what he's trying to lay down. So, yeah, it has been fun to, to watch that. Hold on, I gotta go get him a long hurt. Okay. Don't be chicken. such a douche. Okay, okay. You're a chicken if you don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> a hundred bucks. Dude, this is a hundred dollars. I'll pay for it. Oh. <laughs> You're about to cry. <laughs> I can't help the stuff on the top of my mouth. It is 4.50 a.m. and I've just woken up to go and drive to the set of Point, which is a short film that I'm going to be acting in today. A.M. <sighs> Like the first time you're gonna meet half the people here. Yeah, I was like, because everybody else or whatever stuff never showed. Oh, we can weed it down there too. Oh, let's go. Yeah, let's weed this area. Let's do this. <laughs> Legendary, dude. Legendary. I brought some paper towels so we can wipe sweat off your stuff and you can pull down before you can. That's what I'm hoping for because I'm sweating like a goddamn mule. Yeah, once we, you can cool down while we eat breakfast, we throw tosses on. Sorry. Getting your makeup, Dean. Thank you. This is like a super, that, that black magic right there. What a dapper camera. Huh? I said what a dapper camera. A dapper camera. Seriously, there's no service. My name is Matthew Kogar. I am CEO, actor, writer, director for Moonlit Red Studios. I met Cody because I married his wife's sister, and one day he just invited me to go along with acting with a, a project titled uh, The Road to Nowhere, and I just found it. Like, I've never acted before then. It was just a uh, it, you know, it found me actually, like I just love it, and it inspired me to go and 
branch out and make my own company because I love he inspired me like I love doing it it's it's fun yeah after the road to nowhere I think it was like a couple years ago or something like that uh, he wanted me to come back after I moved back and uh, it was for the star role for Rocksaw I was the detective and it was just a great time I had, I had a lot of fun if if you want to say so, looking from the uh, YouTube series, The Road to Nowhere, and then going from that to Rock Saw, you could kind of see my progression in my acting skills. Like, I was, I'll be honest with you, I was bad. <laughs> <laughs> but that was my first, my first ever acting. Like, I didn't take drama in high school, I didn't do anything like that. When I went into Rock Saw, I think my highlights were the ending of it. Am I allowed to spoil anything? Yeah. Okay. I'm like it's already released. When when I when I when I did like a lunging punch at the killer at the end, that was it. It just looked good on camera, and no one got hurt. So mm -hmm. I think I think it was that was like my the first time I've ever done anything like that. What was it like acting in Rock Saw? It was really fun. Like I've, like I said, I've never had any acting experience. I didn't go to acting school. I didn't take drama in high school. I almost did, but it's, I didn't. Um, I just, I like being on set. I like hearing action. I like, I like reading my lines. I like studying my lines. I like doing the lines. It was just fun, man. <laughs> It was good. They fed me. You know, I got paid for, for shooting a couple scenes too, so that was cool. Um, yeah, it was just, it's, it's a really tight-knit group and it's really respectful. Like, there's a lot of respect and honor within all of us. And that's, that's what I'm hoping to achieve with this partnership. Yeah, yeah so you mean like uh, the integration of the two companies? Yeah. Like a partnership. Yeah, that's what, that's what I was saying. I was very inspired because you've been doing this since a child. I haven't, but like seeing you do it, I'm like, I want to do that myself. And I'm, I'm getting somewhere. I mean, I, I got a name. <laughs> I've got some projects that are releasing soon. Well, one of them is actually integrated into Toxic Film Productions with the series Red Vision. And it's, uh, it's just going to be an episode in that show. Uh, it's going to be a good time. I also have uh, another one that I haven't written yet, but I'll give you some information. It's going to be kind of like a uh, a western, but in the modern era. So it's going to be it's going to be pretty cool. I'm excited for it. And uh, Cody is actually going to be the main bad guy in that one. So I like being the bad guy. Dallas Black. <laughs> Dallas Black. Dallas Black. Part one of our film uh, was filmed in three days. We had a professional drone pilot by the name of Joe Shannon White, who uh, owns a company called iDrone. Uh, he was a friend of my father's back whenever my father was in the oil field. We also had two PAs. We managed to film the first half of the movie ahead of schedule and ahead of planning. To f we then, you know, of course, filming part two November 17th and uh, 18th of 2018 and after doing the production right I couldn't believe that I hadn't been doing this all along I had fun creating this film and uh, after it was finished I knew everything would change after that Think you want me to go go? Yeah Okay <laughs> well, <you're laughs> Wait for that big old truck to pass by because it's making a lot of noise. I'm not listening to this shit. It's all the way to fucking Rock Saw. Don't you have something else to listen to? It's a little bit, I don't know, softer? <laughs> you like the thing? I know, I know. <laughs> I was, you're looking there, you're like. This is Kaylee. She's our headache of the film and off the scenes. And mm -hmm. I'm also the funniest. Oh, she got jokes. <laughs> Done it for days. 
we got our donuts set up. All the different equipment and stuff. And then we got our media set up back here on the other side of the fence. <laughs> yeah, do it. It wasn't even synchronized. Y'all are fucking horrible. You gotta do something interesting though. Like the you gotta blow a balloon. Was that interesting? Oh, you started recording? Yeah. What's up? It just takes a lot more. I feel like. Really about like. that that Wait until he's out there. And then you're, cut off this tree doesn't really give me a good. That first one. Well, that's good. Now we head back. We need the fishing pole. Cut. Warn. Action. <laughs> Damn, that was so hot. Action. difficult to know what's interesting. I'm just gonna keep it going for like a few minutes at a time. What are we doing? <laughs> I just wanna find somewhere to sit down. started going to ARP ISD late 2009 which is where I met my wife Ashley I made some friends but most would rather get high than create a film and just when things started to get better and I thought that they couldn't get worse life was there to prove me wrong my dad Jared King was diagnosed with signet cell colon cancer early 2009. On September 10th of 2010, he passed away. I always felt like my father was my rock when things got hard. He was always there when I needed advice, company, or just to lighten the mood. And then he was gone. I started taking drugs and started to drink and when I was alone I started hating myself for the things I had done and took advantage of. When my father died I wasn't exactly in the best place. Things just got harder and harder and suddenly I was contemplating suicide and different things. I went down a very dark path and my creativity stopped for about I would say a year and a half it took me a while to get back to the way I was uh, if it wasn't for my wife Ashley I'm not sure if I would have pulled out of it I uh, I don't know it's just things got harder and it was hard for me to be creative knowing that like there were so many things that I didn't say to my dad and there were so many things that I had said that I wish I could have taken back that just stayed there in the back of my mind and I really wish that I would have been able to just take it all away but
And uh, basically, we found a place that we're going to be using as a temporary setup studio where we're going to be able to pretty much have AC. We're going to have kitchen area. Like, we got all the stoves and everything and stuff. Big open area for being able to do like full set setups and stuff. Got multiple rooms and stuff that we could possibly use, plus restrooms, both men and women's. And then we got more rooms and stuff, plus a back area so on and so forth but uh this right here is going to be basically helping us develop more upscale type films on a lower budget that way we can pretty much fool the audience making them think that we spent more than we actually did because this place is pretty dang cheap this is what i wanted to do for a living so that being said, I wasn't about to just let something as simple as not having money get in the way of that. I started finding new ways to create such as DIY forms and different stuff to imitate and replicate the ways of the big industry. Whether it be through practical or CGI, didn't matter. I was going to find a way to basically do the projects I wanted to create. And so I ended up creating a, my company called Toxic Film Productions. And I've managed to pull off my first feature film, Rock Saw, which we managed to create for $1,000. Now, it not, might not be the best compared to what other people have created, but then again, those people have had bigger budgets than we had. I only had a thousand dollars to work with so I broke down every bit of that script to make sure that I was going to be able to create the stuff that I wanted to create and I finally created something but I fell back into my old ways after I released Rocksaw I put it on YouTube my channel and I was thinking that you know it would bring a lot more subscribers that I needed to the channel to you know establish a setting Rocksaw ranked in about 2700 views before hitting its you know its plateau as they call it and it was it felt pretty good to get you know such a thorough feedback it was running in and it ended and and it didn't bring in the subscribers I thought it would. I kept moving through finding a film club in my local area and working on a short and that led to me being a part of another short that someone else created. Pieces started fitting and I started making connections around my local area to find other individuals that were just as passionate as I am about my projects. And I'm hoping that in the end, this will end up spawning into something even more than what I thought originally of creating. bit stressed right now um, voting was supposed to end at four we had uh, basically gotten a purchase or whatever and stuff last minute and it was like probably well I wouldn't say it's last minute but it was um, about 30 minutes before the festival uh, like voting was supposed to end and we still haven't received a voting link like they're dropping the ball and uh, it's really starting to stress me out because people are 
still voting, but we aren't getting our voting links, which is kind of bullshit. And, um, yeah, so I'm, I went from, I just keep getting voted down and stuff, and... So, here's a little update on, uh, basically what went on with the film festival that we are a part of with Guts and Pride. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I got a little bit stressed, 24 hours. Bitch, it ended at 4. Like, why am I gonna have to wait 24 hours to hear back from your bitch ass? Um, because there wasn't any updates really after it pushed on to the next round, what went on. So, uh, I ended up getting an email... Uh, let me know that the festival had ended and who won and everything like that and uh, Even though we didn't win uh, I'm still happy that we made the finalist list But uh, there was this like small little section uh, that was in between where I might have had a little bit of a meltdown uh, But here's the list So this is what we're looking at about 112 votes Sitting at number four, we were up at number two, but last minute, literally, uh, the last 30 minutes, sorry about the washing machine, but last 30 minutes literally got bumped down all the way to four, and these people somehow ended up bumping up and stuff after the voting polls were supposed to close at four, and they ended up bumping up. Basically, we got this, uh, this email and stuff telling you congratulations all the good stuff about becoming a finalist and these are all the films that ended up becoming finalists uh that were like part of the ending deal and only one was chosen uh from uh the entire list we are right here guts and pride and a lot of these weren't in our Deal. I was like, there's only five from Mars, which means that only top five from the online deal had moved on. Waiting to see if that changes right there. We'll change from selected to semi-finalist. That's how it should look. It should have that little emblem right there. See how it says selected right there? It should say semi-finalist, but it should be right there. What's up, everybody? This is Ming Chen from AMC's Comic Book Men. Uh, you've seen me on TV with uh, gallivanting around with Kevin Smith. I'm giving a big shout out to my man, my favorite filmmaker of all time, Cody C. King. Listen, I've hung out with Kevin Smith. I've hung out with Quentin Tarantino. I've toured Troublemaker Studios, and I've seen Robert Rodriguez. They're all fine filmmakers and all, but my for my money, for my you know, my vast, uh, for all, anybody who loves film, anybody who has any taste, you want to check out the films. Uh, my favorite filmmaker, Cody C. King. He's got an amazing YouTube channel called Royal Class Video, and he's got a new film premiering soon called The Place of Shadows. I have just subscribed to Royal Class Video. I love everything on there, and I cannot wait to see A Place of Shadows. So, I had some fun, um, basically, filming with the Longview Film Club, um, we, I'm pretty sure that my part is wrapped, seeing to, uh, I don't see anything on the schedule that's basically saying any otherwise, but, uh, they were talking that they might have to do a second shoot day at the Marshall train station. So, I might end up having to go back, but it was a pretty fun day. Met some pretty cool people. Uh, one of the actors was from L.A. Uh, it seems our, uh, the Longview Film Club just keeps uh, growing. And we got individuals from all over, all over the U.S. Uh, hopefully, we might end up getting people from out of countries and whatnot. Uh, it just seems like that our group just keeps growing and it's pretty cool because uh, the more hands we have on deck, the more people that we have to uh, help out uh, with each project and uh, soon we'll be running 
multiple projects and uh, doing all kinds of crazy stuff. I was acting the majority of the day, so I wasn't able to take as m as much footage as I wanted to. Uh, it, it was pretty much just a non-stop, just constant thing. So uh, this is the footage that I did manage to get. In the morning, it's uh, right now 7 o'clock in the morning, and I'm having to drive it a little further to go to the next shoot of the Longview Film Club's new project. And uh, it's cold right now, it's 45 degrees. Oh, you gotta be fucking kidding me. It's showing I have a damn flat tire. It's that concrete burn, it's the worst. Well, we had a murder on the team. It's pretty much the same thing that he has for the big camera. When you turn, that what keeps it? Is there a button? Oh, a little toggle. Oh yeah, I need one of those. Oh yeah, can't you like swirl it around like and keep the phone in the same motion? Yep. I use one too on my YouTube channel. Yeah, but what brand is that? This right here is a Zoomy. Yeah, I bought a DJI. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, mine is this one right here was like a hundred bucks at Walmart. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was like, I've had it for like seven years, so I was like, it's, it's definitely done its job. <laughs> I was like, I've used it on multiple film sets, I was like, BTS, I was like, I, I just carry it around and stuff. Now that's a shot. <laughs> oh. Right now, we're on break. We're here at the train station. And as you can see, the train's behind me. Yeah, we're uh, 
on lunch break right now, uh, just getting ready for the big like shoot of the fight scene and stuff. Everybody's still eating their lunches and everything like that. But yeah, this should paint out to a pretty good day. Uh, so far, I'm having fun, having a lot, a lot of fun actually. It's been pretty cool. The mafia, like 1920 mafia style type. Uh, short film throughout the years I would have to say that uh, I've been able to work with a lot of really cool people I've been able to create a lot of really cool stuff it doesn't really get easier to make each film but I could say that I get to take a lot more away from each project that I end up doing and it's more and more for each project and Ultimately, I feel like my skills have greatly increased since I began and I've gotten a lot of recognition for the films I've done. Semi-finalist semi you know, type position that I ended up getting in the film festival with Guts and Pride in the UK. Um, but ultimately, I feel that there's a lot of growth that I can still do and ultimately that's the goal is to just keep growing and uh, keep creating. Because I'm trying to guess and yep. reset. Uh -oh. 